Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue talking about the Soul Drinkers as we get into part three. If you have not checked out the other videos of this series, please do that. Jump on over to our YouTube channel and subscribe, and of course, check out these those other channels starting with part one. Uh, if you have any suggestions for Space Marine chapters that you guys would like us to create a video for, please comment down below with suggestions followed by whatever topic or uh, Space Marine chapter you guys would like us to cover. Let's get into 40 facts about the Soul Drinkers. Sarpedon bravely confronted the corrupt Dreadnought, attempting to stop Danathos's mad ambition from coming to fruition. During the combat that ensued, Sarpedon sustained multiple mortal wounds from the Dreadnought's missiles and Stormbolter. The Dreadnought smugly plucked the mortally wounded Chapter Master from the floor with his power fist intent on crushing him to death. The Dreadnought brought the Chapter Master closer so he can get a better view as he crushed his victim to death. Sarpedon quickly enacted his desperate plan, reaching into his ammunition pouch that hung from his belt from which he pulled the Soul Spear. He reclaimed this ancient Arcotech weapon from Ictinos during his confrontation in the Phalanx Hangar. Using the artifact's deadly vortex field twin case blades, Sarpedon whipped the Soul Spear upward through the heart of Danitho's cybernetic sarcophagus, separating it from the body of the Dreadnought. The pressure on Sarpedon stopped as the Dreadnought's power fist fell inactive. Sarpedon freed himself from the power fists and stood before what remained of the Dreadnought's body. The front of the walker had been completely sheared away, revealing the life support cradle in which Dinothos had spent the last 6,000 years. Reaching inside, Sarpedon tore away at the cabling and wiring and grasped Danathos around what remained of his scrawny neck. Pulling him out of the sarcophagus, Sarpedon had a fate in mind that befit the treachery enacted by Danathos. Meanwhile, Captain Luko, Sergeant Gravis of the Soul Drinkers, along with a small squad of Imperial Fists, Librarian Varnica of the Silver Skulls, and a battle sister of the Sororitas made their way toward the Predator's Eye in order to close the warp gate and confront Abrax himself. Along the way, they were confronted by the demon horrors of the warp, and many of their numbers were slain. In a final confrontation, the surviving Astartes and sisters managed to overcome the vile demon prince and cast him back into the warp. The Predator Eye then began to slowly seal itself shut. At the height of the pitched battle between the beleaguered Imperial forces and the massive demonic host, the sudden closing of the warp gate dramatically affected the demon army. The demons dropped to their knees or began to scream in pain as their link with Abrax and the Immaterium itself was broken. The Imperial forces quickly took advantage and charged into the ranks of the demon horde, cutting them down where they stood. The Imperial defenders drove the demons forward, through the Phalanx forges, and on towards a cargo bay where the heart of the demon infestation had been planted. Librarian Varnica, Sister Asicario, and two soul drinkers were the only survivors of the great battle to seal the warp gate. When first Captain Lysander arrived to take custody of the soul drinkers, the soul drinkers' captain hauled the gravely wounded Gravis over toward the closing portal. The two Soul Drinkers knew there was no place in the galaxy for them, not in the cells of the Phalanx or in the grips of whatever punishment was decided for them, not even in freedom. The whole galaxy had been set against them for so long that there was nowhere they could go and nothing they can do. They would not hand themselves over to the Imperial Fist's custody. The two surviving Soul Drinkers stepped through the portal into the warp and into whatever fate awaited them there. The portal then closed completely, cutting off the madness of the Immaterium from real space. As the Imperial Fists and the Howling Griffins were killing off the last of the demons running loose on the vessel, Sarpedon made his presence known. The Chapter Master was near death, wounded, but not defeated. Sarpedon then held up the remains of Danathos before Chapter Master Pew and the Imperial Fists. He explained that it was he who had brought Abrax forth from the warp. Danathos had been the architect of their damnation, manipulating the Soul Drinker's chapter into the destiny he had foreseen. Sarpedon explained that it was because of men like Danathos that innocent suffered, and that he had been a fool for not seeing that Danathos had been manipulating him into the role he wanted him to play. 
He challenged the Imperial Fist to succeed where he had not, and to help stem the suffering of mankind, or else do nothing and watch the human race fall. Though moved by his words, Chapter Master Pew still had to take Sarpedon into custody, but the Chapter Master refused. Sarpedon instead somehow managed to reopen the warp gate. As Sarpedon stepped toward the portal, Danathos grew fearful of his fate within the realm of chaos, and screamed in terror, for the Dark Gods were unkind to those servants who failed. Sarpedon stepped over the threshold and into the portal, dragging the screaming philosopher soldier into the warp and out of reality. The portal then slammed shut behind them. Despite everything that had passed between them, the Imperial Fists recognized the sacrifice of the Soul Drinkers and had their names chiseled on the vast stone columns within the Apothecarion. One column bore the names of the Imperial Fists who had died in the valiant defense of the Phalanx, while alongside it, another column bore the names of the Soul Drinkers, listing them as brothers in death. The Soul Drinkers were gone, but not their legacy for their tale would serve as a caution to all those who do not see that the hand of chaos is ever present and ever ready to lead men to their unwitting damnation. The soul drinkers have an honored tradition called the honor duel. An honor duel was a tradition from the old way. This traditional form of combat was as old as the Imperial Fist Legion, the legion of the legendary Primarch Rogodorn from the ranks of which the Soul Drinkers had been founded almost 10,000 years before. The Soul Drinkers believed that the Emperor would give strength to the arm of his champions, and Rogodorn would console victory to the just. They also believed that he would lend strength to those that are worthy. Another well-known Soul Drinker tradition is the Sacred Blood Rite. A few battle brothers, those who made notable skills in battle, were permitted to crack open the skulls of their victims and take the brain materials inside. A quirk of the Soul Drinker's gene seed had rendered their organs in their stomachs unusually sensitive, and as a result, the genetic memories they could absorb had powerful emotional and spiritual resonance. This became a religious act, for a Soul Drinker to swallow a goblet of the bloody pink mass and to experience the memories and sensations that streamed from it. Pains were taken to ensure that those who were not Astartes did not witness this ritual. A non-Astarte was mortally simplistic and could not be trusted to see the blood rites of the Adeptus Astarte and not come to a wayward conclusion. Trials of the Scintillantian Death was an honored tradition amongst the soul drinkers. Each aspirant of the reclusium, potential chaplains, had to submit themselves to the trial it had been this way ever since the Soul Drinker's vessel, the Scintillantian Death, had returned to the chapter after its disappearance in the 34th millennium. The aspirants learn of the fear that every battle brother possesses within them. It is not the petty dread of a human. It is a terror that makes every chapter strong, for their battle brothers fight to starve it off, but it makes them weak, for they will all wrench in death with their fear having come pass. The Soul Drinkers believe that they possess fear that went beyond that which a mere man could comprehend. It was the fear of dying with their work yet undone, for a soul drinker takes all ills of the galaxy upon his shoulders, and as long as they remain, he cannot rest. Theirs was a fight that could never end, and so when they died, it was with battle still to be won. This was the fear that they felt. This was the terror that drove them on, the terror of death, for they believed that everyone died with their duty not yet done. Not all those who submitted themselves to this trial succeed, some were even lost. This was the price aspirants had to pay for enlightenment, and so, if any aspirants returned successfully, the reclusium accepted a new student. And those were 40 facts about the Soul Drinkers. We have finally finished the series for the Soul Drinkers. Again, guys, if you guys have any more topics or Space Marine chapters that you guys would like me to make a video for, please comment down below. Don't forget to put suggestion followed by the chapter or um, whatever topic you guys want us to create a video for. Now, a special message from us. What's up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. We are One Mind Syndicate here to tell you guys that this is day two of the 40k giveaway. Because we hit 40k subscribers, yeah! 
thank you guys so much for all the support that you've been showing the channel. We love creating Warhammer 40k videos, and you guys are awesome. So we want to, um, you know, get you set up with more Warhammer 40k models. And today we're getting the uh, the starter of the Eldar. Now, if you're gonna play Eldar, one thing that, or if you are, if you are new to the game and you win this. You got to know that Eldar are really strong, so go easy on your friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to win this awesome prize, just comment down below. You can comment anything you want and as many times as you want. But don't forget that if you comment the same thing over and over again, YouTube is going to see that as spam and they're going to erase. Not, yeah, they're not going to basically let it post on the comments. Exactly. So be sure to comment like this video and subscribe to the channel and we will be checking for all three things don't forget make your uh youtube profile public so that way we can actually contact you yeah and again thank you guys so much for all this uh, the, the support that you guys have been giving us again guys you guys are awesome you guys have made us reach 40k subscribers and it feels awesome so don't forget to like comment subscribe to get that awesome prize and I'll catch you tomorrow like always. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.